Huh, what to make a video about today? Hmm. I already made one about the Optiplex. You all know what my custom built is. The AC? No. Huh. Oh, hey. All right, yes, today we're going to be making a video about the Dell Dimension 4100. Um, now, a fellow YouTube user, PCGeek23, also has one of these machines. He is no longer with us here on YouTube, though, because of, well, nobody's actually quite sure why he's gone, but uh, he's not here on YouTube anymore. Anyway, I got this machine a while back, the day before I got the uh, Optiplex, which is running a file server. And I'm going to use this machine for some more retro gaming. It Up top, it's got the... Um, see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, there we go. It's got a DVD multi-recorder drive. A DVD... Or a uh, CD rewritable drive. Uh, we have two bays, four floppy drives. Or two three and a half inch bays. Two five and a quarter inch bays. A uh, floppy disk drive, which is in fact occupied with a floppy disk drive. We have the power button, which was broke when I got it, but I mended it. A hard drive LED. Reset switch. Uh, some ventilation around the corners of the case, which also goes to the bottom of it as well. The Dell Dimension logo. And we have a sticker down here which says it's designed for either Microsoft Windows 2000 Professional or Windows 98. And it's got an Intel Pentium 3 inside. Now to get into this machine, it's a lot different than most cases. Most cases you have a thumb screw right here and somewhere around right here. Well on this one, you have a thumb screw right here. Some very long threads, I might add. And then you have to pull in on these tabs, the top one and the bottom one, when it comes off. So I'm going to have to do that off camera. But before I do that, I'm going to run over the back ports. So we have the uh, switch between 220 volts and 115 volts, the uh, standard lead for a plug or a cord. We have the fan. PS2 mouse and keyboard ports, two USB 1.1 ports, a parallel printer port, serial port, also diagnostic LEDs. We have a video card slot, or a, um, no, not a video card slot. So we have the uh, AGP slot, which has the VGA on the Riva TNT2, uh, 32 megabyte. We have a Creative Sound Blaster PCI card. And we also have an Ethernet card, which is the D Link 530TX Plus. As you can tell by the D Link logo right there. Also, here's the 92mm rear exhaust fan. And if you look inside there, you can tell that this fan actually has a temperature probe. Here's the power supply, along with the CD and DVD drives, one of which is not plugged in, as you can tell. We have the two RAM DIMMs, which this takes PC133 SD RAM. We also have the Intel 815 chipset. Here we have the fan shroud for the Intel Pentium 3 800.
Here's the fan shroud for said Pentium 3. We have the NVIDIA Riva TNT 2. We also have the Sound Blaster and the Ethernet card down here. Here we have the floppy drive, which is just a standard 1.44 megabyte drive. Here's a better look at the motherboard. Let me get the light up in here a little bit better. Now, I'm not able to get this out, but as you can tell, this computer does have a Western Digital Caviar drive in it. It is a 10 gigabyte hard drive with the IDE interface, of course. Now, this is a pretty cool classic machine. I don't have it plugged in, of course, but I can plug it in if you guys want to hear it. To get to the hard drive, you do have to, in fact, pull this side panel or the uh, side retention plate off. And it just scissors out of there, as you can tell. It locks in there and comes out. And it kind of just keeps the system rigid, as you can see how the case comes up a little. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the um, power cord, and we're going to see how this thing sounds. If you guys are curious, there's the model number for the motherboard. Turn it sideways, if you guys can see that any better. Or that is some... Uh, actually, no, there's the model number for the motherboard right there. There's a quick look at the inside of this machine. Strangely, it has a vent of some sort at the bottom, as you can see, but, um... There's no fan down there, so I don't know what that is exactly for. And there's nothing really to pull air out, so I'm not exactly sure what they were going for there. However, now, I'm going to turn off the air conditioner. I'm going to reach back here, I'm going to get a power cord. We're gonna see how this machine sounds. So I'm gonna put the camera in there next to the hard drive first so you'll get to hear the drive. Do that one more time with the camera facing it so the microphone will be closer. Here, have some product keys. One final thing is that this machine is very quiet. So now before I put this vintage beast away, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys the specs. It's got an Intel Pentium 3 CPU running at 800 MHz and a 512 kilobyte level 1 cache, or level 2 cache, my bad. It has the Intel motherboard. It features the Intel 815G chipset. It has a 10 gigabyte IDE 7200 RPM hard drive. It also has a NVIDIA TNT2, or an NVIDIA Riva TNT2, 64 megabyte or 32 megabyte graphics card. It has 384 megabytes of PC133 memory, along with a stock 200 watt Dell power supply. So overall guys, this is a very cool machine, and if you want to pick one up for yourself, they're pretty cheap on eBay. So, uh... If you want to load up your favorite vintage OS on this machine or even make it into a cool little Linux box, feel free to do so. 
talk to you guys later.